Today I'm gonna mix using soft two plugins only. Let's quickly check before and after processing, just to have an idea on what we are gonna achieve. For a fair and useful comparison, I have level match both tracks. Although the master version feels louder, but that's because of our perception. And my engineering skills. You also find the loudness analyzer that show you values, no tricks here, but tracks comes with the same integrated HeliFS. So the finished song sounds more glued, defined and finally more engaging. The song is also mastered, but today we're going to address mixing only. But stay tuned cause there will be a video about mastering too. If you are interested and you want to know more about how to mix and master music, check the description for my complete mixing and mastering course, where I explain every important process step by step. If you have any questions, write it in the comments. Now it's time to dive into the project. Let's start with drums. Uh, just let's take a quick listen with and without processing. Let's take a look at every step of the process. The first plugin I use is Bus Processor. Starting from the left, I went from Link to Dual Mono, cause I like to process left and right separately. Then I settled the threshold just to have a couple of dB of compression. Slow attack, fast release, just to let the transient to go through the compressor without being affected to retain the punch. Then I have engaged saturation and also played with the width, making the bass in mono and enhancing the wideness on the higher frequencies. The next processor was uh, mic E, and this is very cool cause I crashed the compression, then I went down with a dry wet now just let's take a listen with and without With this compressor I just wanted to give some kind of glue and also to shape the tone cause the kick you can hear is not the only kick, we have two different kicks on this song. So I wanted to bring the lower frequencies a bit down and make everything to sound more even. The last effect is just an EQ, I wanted to boost a bit more the low end and to shape the tone even more. Let's take a listen on and off. So I have bring back some lower frequencies I lost with the compression. Then we have the kick. Here at the first I just use an EQ to let the kick to sound better. Then I've used a transient shaper to reduce the sustain of the kick. Then we have the main guitar. Here I use two plugins, an EQ and a reverb. Let's start from the first. This reverb is perfect for the vibe. It's a kind of reverb that you load and that's it. It sounds very natural and I like this one a lot. Then I use this EQ for a very little correction.
without his EQ, the guitar doesn't sound really well. I want that guitar to sound more warm and with some kind of vibe. Then we have another guitar. Let's take a listen without the processing first. This song counts with no bass, so I wanted this rhythmic guitar to be some kind in between a guitar and a bass. Just let's take a quick listen to the full mix with and without this chain. Without these effects, it just sound. It sound without emotion, and this is something that really, really needs to be fixed. Now let's check every step of the chain. I started with an EQ. Let's disable the other effects. So I reduce uh, the higher part of the frequencies with a high shelf cause uh, I want just the vibe, just the mood uh, and I enhance the lower frequencies. We have hi-hats, uh, a part of voice in this section so we don't really need it. The second processing is a saturator cause I want the lower part of the frequencies to go higher, to be more intelligible on smaller speakers cause I want that guitar to be heard everywhere. Last but not least, another reverb. I love this one and I've used it again. It sounds very good and helps to create the right ambience for the song. Let's listen with and without. It's time for the vocals now. The first step is just an EQ. I wanted to get rid of the lower frequencies cause I don't really need them. Then I went for an opto compressor cause uh, I wanted to start to work with dynamics. Usually I like to use a fat compressor first, but with these vocals I prefer the opto compressor because uh, it sounds more natural to me. Then I use a deesser. This one is probably the best deesser out there because it's able to deesser a voice but also retaining the higher frequencies. Let's take a quick listen. Did you hear the F? Listen to right now with the deesser. Listen also the word down, the letter D, it's out of the place without the answer. Nothing brings me down, the that D it's super loud. Now it's way more controlled, it's awesome. The next one, it's a tape. I really like this one. Nothing brings me down when I the roller coaster ride and I can't take no more tonight. Then I see you. I don't know if you ever heard a real tape, but this one it's getting really really close 
because of the that you can hear the dynamics uh, and of course also the harmonics but i really like the way it kind of compress the voice in a way well in the way of a real tape then we have another EQ here i just made some correction So I had just a bit of muddiness here and I also wanted to shape a little bit in a good way the higher frequencies. Just small but very needed correction. Last we have a fat compressor just to even dynamics. It's just about 3 dB of gain reduction, not too much but this helps to make everything to sound more even. Then we have the vocal reverb. Okay, here I made something that is really interesting. I like this delay because it sounds nice, but it's a mono delay. So I use two different instances with different timings and kind of different settings. One is for left channel, the other one is for the right channel, just to have a kind of different width, a different delays for both channels. Okay, different delays, I really like this one, I also like that kind of trick to have two different delays to make more width within a song using even the same delay with different settings. Then I use a bus processor like uh, I use on the drum bus. Uh, here it's just a bit of compression uh, with the external sidechain. I want to duck the delay when the voice is on. So the voice comes in this compressor to be the signal that sidechain the delay. So, so everything doesn't get too messy. You see, without the compression, it sounds too weird, it sounds too busy, that's too much stuff going on, and the vocal, the main vocal, gets too much lost in the mix, it's too washed, so I don't like it, and using a sidechain compression helps to get everything, well, to sound better. If you like this video, give it a like, subscribe, and enable notifications too. If you want to learn more about mixing and mastering, check the description. Soft 2 plugins are very good for mixing, but not only. Stay tuned cause we will see how good they are for mastering too. See you in the next one, ciao!